Hey, this is Marvin and today I show you how we can convert this shader here from Shader Toy and put it into Unity. So let's start by simply creating a new project and we wanted to do a 2D project. Let's name it Shader Converter and create. Welcome to our empty Unity project. All right, the first thing we wanted to do is we want to create a plane object. So we're going to the 3D objects and go to plane. And we also want to see that. So when I switch to the game view, there's nothing to see. And that's because the rotation of the plane is not set properly. So I switch to the 3D scene view, change the rotation a little bit and also center the plane. And now you can see that we can see the plane. That's pretty nice, but that's not all, obviously. So the next thing we wanted to do is we wanted to create a custom material. And the way it works with Unity and shaders is the following. So you create a shader. We go for unlit shader here. And then you apply a shader or you attach a shader to a material. So we're going to our material and then we select a shader here. We have created an unlit shader and we have called it Voronoi. So we select that one here. And now we have material attached with our shader. And that's really great. And what we can do right now is we can just drag and drop the material and assign it to the plane in the scene. So that's the first step. What we have done is we have created a shader and have attached it to a material and have attached or assigned that material to the plane in our scene. I want to show you what's inside of the shader we created, inside of the voronoi.shader file. And to do so, I'm going to open the project with Visual Studio Code. Here you can see the shader file and you can also see that there is some content in it because Unity was so kind and put kind of a boilerplate or a default unlit shader into that shader file. So we have something we can execute. And I shortly want to explain the content of this shader. So. Here in the first line, we have the name of our shader. Then here we define some properties which are passed into the shader. And here, that's also really important. We define that our shader contains a vertex function, which is called vert, which you can find below here, and which is executed for each vertex the shader should render. And this line tells the shader that there is a fragment function, which is called frag and the fragment function is executed for each pixel the shader should render. For each pixel we just want to know a color and that one is simply returned here in that fragment shader or in that fragment function. So a color is defined by four values and we can just return a red color here to demonstrate what the fragment shader is doing um, the first value is the R value, so I can write it as a comment here, R, G, B, A. So red is one, green is zero, blue is zero, and the alpha value is one. And so that means that we just return a red color here. I save it and go back to Unity. And you can see we have a shader, which is just return. Red is pretty important to mention that when we write shaders and using them along with Unity, they are written in HLSL, in the high level shader language. And when I'm going to the shader toy project we want to convert, this shader code here is written in a slightly different language, which is called GLSL. And I want to talk about the things which are contained in the shader shortly. Basically, the fragment shader function, which I mentioned earlier, is called main image in shader toy. So that's our fragment shader function, which is executed once for each pixel. And it returns a color, which we want to have for the current pixel. 
and as an input it takes the coordinate of the pixel we actually want to render. Instead of a fragment function, it's important to notice that we have a function called Voronoi, which is defined here. We call it inside of our fragment function and inside of the Voronoi function we have a function R2D, which is called, that's defined over here, and we also call a function Polygon. And that's defined here and that's basically the whole shader code. So we have a fragment function and then we have some other functions defined here and that one is the definition of a constant. So it's basically just defining p here and p is used over here. This line is also pretty important because what we do here is taking a texture called i channel 0 and taking a single color value out of it, reading one pixel of this texture. And you can see that here at the bottom we have to find i channel 0. So that's basically an input for our shader. We are passing a texture or an image into, image into that shader and in our fragment function we are reading a single pixel from this texture. And that's basically it about the shader in shader toy. And now what we want to do is just copying the whole thing put it into the Voronoi shader we already created. Then doing some taps here. And I told you that the main image function, which we are using here in shader toy, is our fragment function. So what we want to do is we want to take the content out of this function and insert it into our fragment function. Now what we have is something like a really strange mix. So we have a HLSL shader which contains a lot of GLSL shader code which doesn't make any sense so I can save that one. Going back to Unity and you can see the compiler is complaining about something. There are some errors in the shader and it's also pretty important to notice that this has turned into pink, which normally just signals that there is a problem with the shader. And you can just check out the compiler errors and then see what you can do about it. Right now, the compiler is complaining about VEC2, which you don't know. So you can go into the shader code here. And in GLSL, that defines a vector of the length 2. In HLSL, we have float2 for that like that, that's the same. And what we want to do to solve this is just search for all occurrences of VEC and replace them with float. And that's it. So this function does not exist in HLSL, so it's called frac in HLSL. So we want to search for frac and rename it with frac go for that one, see what's coming next. It's complaining about the function a10. So we can look for that one. It's over here. And you can see that this function takes two arguments in GLSL, but actually the function in HLSL only takes one argument. So there is another function called a102, which takes two arguments, which is what we want to use here. Here it's complaining about an undeclared identifier mix. Mix is simply called lerp in high level shader language. That's exactly the same function. And then it's complaining about an unexpected token point. We can search for point. We can see that one is highlighted here. That means that it's kind of a keyword in high level shader language. And because of that reason, we just want to rename the variable here. Replace it here, here and here. And that should solve the problem. Then we can see that there is another undeclared identifier i time. Shader toy provides a variable i time, which is here. And in Unity, there is 
a variable called underscore time dot y, which is the same. So we replace i time with i time dot y on the cloud identifier record, and we can check it out in the code. It's that line here, and Shadertoy provides a variable called frecCord as an input for the shader, and here we execute a variable called uv, which Unity already provides. So the way it works in Unity in this shader is the following. We have frec here, this function takes an argument i, and the argument i is from data type v to f, and that's a custom struct which is defined somewhere in the code when I'm searching for it. You can see that we have to find it here. That's a data structure which defines some variables which are contained inside of the struct. And we already have uv here, which means instead of calculating uv, which is the shader and shader toy doing, we can simply say, hey, we want to take our uv variable from i and that should solve the problem. The next problem is about incorrect number of arguments. It's on line 104. I recognize that for me, I don't know why, the line numbers are differ by two lines. So when it says line 104, it actually means that I have an error in line 106. That's here. And the problem with that one is that in HLSL, we can't define a flow three with one value. So in GLSL, we can say we want to have a VEC3 with three values, which are all zero, but in HLSL, that's not possible. So what we have to do is we have to say what values we want, and that should solve the error. Then we have an undeclared identifier i channel zero. That's pretty interesting because I told you before that the i channel zero is our texture we want to read from. And we don't have i channel zero defined here in HLSL. But we created a default unlit shader in Unity, and Unity has defined another texture which is called main tech which we can use for this purpose. So we can simply say that we want to read from not i channel zero, but main text. And then there is another problem because when you want to read a pixel from a texture in GLSL, you can do that with the command texture. And in HLSL, you do that by say text to D. That's it. I have another problem, undeclared identifier frac color. When we go back to the shader and shader toy, you can see that in our fragment function, we have defined an output over here, which is frac color. And here we simply assign a color to frac, to the variable frac color. And in Unity, it works a little bit different because in our fragment shader function here, we say that we expect a return value. And because of that reason, we simply have to return a value at the end of the function instead of assign a value to a variable. Oh, and that should be the right one, yep. You can see we are done with the conversion. The shader is outputting some stuff which finally makes sense and which is visually recognizable. In the console, there are no more errors to solve. And the last thing we want to do right now is to provide a texture for the shader as it is done in Shader Toy. I downloaded the image which they use in Shader Toy. I will just drag and drop it into Unity. And when we click on the plane, here in the material, you can see that there is space for a texture which the shader takes as an input. So we just drag and drop the image to the material and define it as an input for the shader. And that's it. We can also click on play. So 
of a variable underscore time dot y is changing when we click on play and that's the reason why the tiles are moving right now and the whole shader is doing some stuff and is changing so when we stop the scene the variable called underscore time where is it here that one that one which is uh, which makes the um, tiles moving that is all the time zero and when we click on play this variable is changing over time so it just contains the seconds until the start of the unity scene that's the reason why now we see that it's moving all right i hope you have learned some stuff and hope you are ready for convert your own simple shaders from shader toy to unity and have a lot of fun with that